Welcome to Honey Creek New Province Friends Church. I'm so glad you came to join us today. Um, today's worship is going to be a devotional, an Easter devotional. I don't know about you, but I watch lots of TV and YouTube and listen to songs on Easter, but it wasn't the same as celebrating Easter here in our church with our pastor. Um, this devotional was taken from Dayspring the first tree budded in our yard yesterday, and my daughter was ecstatic. Mom, she cried, look how beautiful. I was struck by the way her joy spilled over in my own heart. I stood for a moment in awe of new life, fresh beginnings, the promise of spring made visible. As we were getting ready for Easter, a season of renewal, it was the unbridled excitement my daughter displayed that let me experience joy in a new and unexpected way. And suddenly, I was reminded of the empty tomb and the childlike wonder of those who witnessed it, who stood at the entrance of the place where just hours before the turning point in history had happened, human feet on holy ground, hearts filled with the utter delight of God's love made visible in a way that had never been before. That's what I wanted on Easter Sunday. I want to be filled with his joy in a new way and let it spill out everywhere. And I believe the children in our lives have a lot to teach us about joy. He, Jesus called the little child to him and placed the child among them. And he said, truly I tell you, unless you change and become like the little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. Matthew 18, two to three. Children ask questions. They haven't yet convinced themselves that they are self-sufficient beings who would know most everything. If you've been following Christ for a while, 
We're likely very familiar with the facts about Easter morning. We feel safe knowing the answers, and sometimes we let that be enough. But what if we ask God for more this year? Ask him to nudge us out of our comfort zone into new experiences of his resurrected life. Sure, we can celebrate those cherished traditions, but let's show up with anticipation too, trusting him to do a new thing. One of the surest routes to authentic praise is to sink our roots deep in the wonder of life, as our children do naturally. Genuine gratitude springs from being present in the moment, aware of even the simplest joys. This Easter season, consider revisiting or beginning that gratitude journal. The more blessings you discover, the more you'll be filled with praise for the one who provided them. As you reflect on the empty tomb, your heart will be worshipful. Did you see that? Watch this. Look close, Mama. Our little ones often express their feelings without filters. They want to draw us into their experience so they can share their excitement. But we grown-ups sometimes forget how wonderful shared joy can be. We assume others wouldn't understand or won't be interested in our experience. However, it's very likely that there are people in our lives right now who desperately need a renewed sense of hope. As you celebrate the resurrection this year, allow that joy to spill over. Whatever it looks like for you, share the joy you found in Christ with the, those around you. Not because you have to, but because you just can't help yourself. So let us come to him this Easter as children, with open hearts and willing hands, to love and serve in whatever he leads us. As we envision the empty tomb and celebrate the eternal freedom we have been given, let us not keep this joy to ourselves. Let's be a part of bringing his kingdom here today, transforming this world with his healing love, one precious heart at a time. Uh, there are several people we need to remember at this time. Uh, Lloyd McDonald, Betty Haywood, Martha Eckhart, Arlene Brandt, Lois Stevens, Dolores Whitehead, and Mildred Marsh. It's very lonely when they can't have visitors, and they're looking forward to a time when we can come visit again. I have some updates on our sick. I called Judy Rushford last night. And Al went to the kidney doctor yesterday, and he does not have to do dialysis. So that was good news. And he walked six times back and forth in the house, and he's eating more. So she was pleased with that. Yesterday, Justin was following commands, talking, and um, they don't think he has any brain swelling, which is good news. They Oh, his delay, they think the delayed reaction came from the time coming off the ventilator. And he will start doing occupational speech and physical therapy. Mike Moyer, my brother-in-law in Oskaloosa, uh, Deb was able to FaceTime with him. She hadn't seen him for 18 days, so she thought he looked wonderful. Uh, they'll start doing breathing trials to try and get him off the ventilator in a few days. And we just thank you for all the prayers going up for these people. It's been a blessing. Um, remember that Arlen Dulesky has volunteered to be available if anybody uh, needs to talk to him or has concerns. Also, you can call the Ministering Council Group, which is John Raines, Jean Fromm, Marilee Lawler, Jane Bear, or myself. So let's uh, bow and pray right now. Dear Father, we thank you for the Easter time. This was an unusual Easter, but the, we can still celebrate the raising of you from the dead. And we thank you for that promise for us. We just pray that you will comfort and um, strengthen and heal those who are sick, be with those who are lonely. We just thank you, Father, for the blessings of Easter. And just after this time of isolation from each other, we just pray that we will be able to reach out and touch others in a new way and be excited about your rising from the dead and bringing the Holy Spirit to us to be with us no matter what. In Jesus' name, amen.
waking up to a new sunrise Looking back from the other side I can see now with open eyes Dark is water and deep is pain I wouldn't trade it for anything Cause my brokenness brought me to you And these wounds are a story you use So I'm thankful for the scars Cause without them I wouldn't know your heart and I know they'll always tell of who you are so forever I am thankful for the scars now I'm standing in confidence with the strength of your faithfulness And I'm not who I was before No, I don't have to fear anymore So I'm thankful for the scars Cause without them I would no and I know they'll always tell of who you are So forever I am thankful for the scars I can see, I can see How you delivered me In your hands, in your feet I found my victory I can see I can see how you delivered me In your hands, in your feet I found my victory I'm thankful for your scars Cause without them I would know your heart And with my life I'll tell of who you are so forever I am thankful I'm thankful for the scars Cause without them I would know your heart And I know they'll always tell of who you are So forever I am thankful for the scars So forever I am thankful for the scars We also do want to remember those who have lost family members during this time. Uh, remember the Roscoe Nelson family, the Opal Wilson family, and Tammy Spindler, our secretaries, lost her mother-in-law and her father-in-law's um, had to go to a lot of doctor appointments. So don't forget to pray for them. I just wanted to end with this. On Facebook, they have had a lot of jokes and everything else about um, COVID-19 and how it would be so nice to get back to normal. And I found this on Facebook, and I thought this was really good. I pray we don't go back to normal. I pray that the next time a friend grabs me and pulls me into a hug, I actually take the time to appreciate the gift of their embrace. I pray that when school resumes and people are dropping off their kids, they take the time to thank the staff for the amazing gift they give to our community. I pray the next time I'm sitting in a crowded restaurant, I take time to look at the, around and see the smiling faces and loud voices and thank God for the gift of community. I pray the next time I'm standing in church listening to the voices of praise and worship, I take the moment to thank God for the gift of congregation. 
I pray the next time I see a person or situation that needs prayer, I hope I pray as passionately and fervently as I have these past few weeks. I pray that when I'm in the grocery store, that I take a moment to thank God that he provides us with the necessities of life and the amazing people who work so hard to keep us supplied. I pray that I never again take for granted the ability to hop in the car and visit a friend, go to the mall, or to a gathering. So truth is, I don't want things to return the way they once were. I pray that we take lessons and challenges of the past few weeks and create a new normal. My goal is to pray more, love harder, and truly appreciate the daily abundance of blessings that were so easily overlooked just a few weeks ago. So be blessed today. Thank you for coming.